So we'll start by um, taking this follower board out or loosening the follower board off. It's quite tight in there. Wow. Oh. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just puff a little bit of smoke in here just to get that smoke circulating through the hive. I'm going to remove this follower board. We're going to have a look at this first bar and see what's on it. See how much honey's in it or whether it can be harvested. I'm just quite waggling it like this to loosen any contact or any connection it has to the walls. They usually connect it about a few inches on the top. So here we can quickly see that this is not a harvestable comb. There's only a little bit of capped honey there. The rest if any, there's, there's probably uh, there's nectar in the rest of the cell, so that's not harvestable. So we're going to leave it on the end. We'll put it back in and put it right up against the wall there. So I'm not dealing with those bees now. So we'll um, loosen the next one off. So these are slightly attached to the walls, hence they don't come out easy. But what I'm doing, I'm just wiggling it to loosen that wax, to, to heat that wax up loosen it and then it just pops off if i was to rip that out straight away without loosening that wax it could rip from the center as opposed to the edges so here we have another top bar full of honey that's really heavy it is full of honey but it's unripened honey most of it's unripened we have this section here which is ripe honey and this section which is non-ripe honey so again we need to leave this one in there come back in a week or two and then it's all right same on the other side. So again, we'll put this one back in and uh, place it back against next to that one. So now we're only dealing with these bees directly here. These bees are hidden away again, so they're going to leave us alone. This one looks a lot better. I can already see from the top that it is harvestable, but I can also see that it's slightly connected to the wall. So I'm just going to make an incision here small incision to, to de disconnect it from the wall. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open it up further, lift this end out slightly and wiggle it again. It's actually quite well connected down there because it's not wiggling so easy. Hence now the pineapple knife. I can get in there, it's a longer blade, and I can really get in there and disconnect that attachment from the wall because it's so full it's very difficult for me to to get in there there's not much room to play with so i like to use different tools to allow easier access so here we go again i'll vibrate that ah there it is okay so mm -hmm. still not ripe. There's still a lot of unripe honey in there. So you can see that, lots of unripe honey. Probably again one or two weeks away. Mm. What I'm gonna do with this one, to give me, to give me some room, I'm gonna not put it over there. I'm gonna put it right on the end here and keep it out of the way. Come back to it later. You can see where that wax has been connected to the wall. That's what I cut out earlier. And it's really good practice to scrape that off with your scraping knife. Because what will happen if I put the comb back into that position, they'll just reattach it to the wall again. Also, this pineapple knife's got a little hook on the end, which I use to pull out wax that falls to the bottom. If you look closely in here, you can see the connection on the edge here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut it again. These are starting to get a bit feisty now. So I'm just going to add a bit more smoke. I don't have to add a lot, just a little puff like that. A lot of people over smoke their colonies. It really stresses them out too much. So I'm cutting, oh yeah, there's not much connection there, which is a great thing. I've explained about shims in other videos, so I'm not going to go there at the moment. The shims are 
these little bits you'll notice that are added on. We're gonna ignore that right now. A little vibration and attachment. That's looking better already. There's a lot mm. more capped honey cells. Um, let's have a look at the other side. That's fully capped. You can see that the whole surface is mottled. Therefore, that's all capped ripe honey. Whereas the other side is a little bit uncapped honey here. Now, because it's more than two thirds or three quarters capped, that's a harvestable comb. I can, I can go ahead and harvest that, not a problem. Another little trick I wanna show you, sometimes I can be looking at it this side and I wanna check out the other side. I can either do this, which is quite annoying, or I can lift it on its end, turn it around, and put it back down. And now I can see now the other side of that comb. So imagine this is a cunny comb. If I was to do that with it, it'll drop off. It'll literally break off and fall on the ground. The way we need to move honeycombs is to lift them on end, turn it around, and drop it back down again. And now I'm looking at both sides here. So that's harvestable. So we've got one definite harvestable comb. These two aren't, but they're full. So we're going to count how many combs of honey we have here and that's going to determine how many we take out. So two harvest, uh, one harvestable, two, three left. There's three combs left in there and one harvestable. This one's definitely harvestable. I can see that already just by looking from the top. It didn't need to be detached either on this side. So there it is. Easily come undone. Check the other side. Yep. Same, yeah. same, easily harvestable. So there's two harvestable combs, okay, definitely, and three non-harvestable. Another one in here, tiny little incision there, tiny little attachment. They're actually not annoying me that much, these bees, they're quite, quite, uh, relaxed mm. Mm. okay so this one's got a bit of brood on it so we're definitely not going to okay. harvest this i'll show you some brood on the other side oh and on this side so here you can see some saw some brood before just up here some drone brood so this is a non-harvestable comb but the rest of it's full of honey so we'll count this as a honeycomb a full honeycomb a non-harvestable full, full honeycomb. So we'll leave that now. We won't bother going in any further because there's brood from now on in the cones. Although all that brood there is about to hatch out and become bees, drone, drone bees, and they'll be filled with honey shortly, and then that'll be a harvestable comb. But today, that's a non-harvestable comb. But I know it's a, it's a good thing to see that because I know now that I can count that as one of their, their edible, yeah, their future harvestable cones. Oh, bees are attacking the camera woman. Don't, don't swat at them. You're yep. safe. You've got okay. a bee suit on. You're safe. I'll just puff those bees around you to stop them annoying you. Thank you. They're not going to get you in there. Very safe. So we'll give them another bit of a... What I'm going to do now is while I'm here, I'm going to scrape off this excess wax that's attached to the walls. I'm starting to get a bit annoyed with my behaviour here. I don't blame me. They are bees after all. So I've determined on this side that we've got, what was it, two or three harvestable combs? Two. Three. Oh. Three or two? Oh, two. Two, harvest. two. two harvestable. Yep. Three non three nine one two three over there and one here and there's probably another full one here another full one there i reckon so we've got one two three just by the amount of brood that was on that last one there's probably the same amount on the next one and a bit more on the next one but in a week or two they'll be full of honey i can i pretty guarantee that there's one two three four five full combs of honey we're going to leave on this side of the hive okay so i'm i can i'm pretty confident we can take these two bars now. So why don't we do that? So the way we harvest out of a Kenyan hive 
and we lift the comb out, we hold it above the cavity, and with a quick jerk down, the bees, some of these bees are going to fall off. Now we don't do this on a hot day because mm -hmm. the, the wax is soft and it can drop off. Yep. We do it on a mild morning, so it's about 11 o'clock in the morning, uh, it's about 20 degrees, 18, 19, 20 maybe. And I'm just going to do this, one, two, three, three shakes, and most of those bees are off with our bee brush or some nice fresh green grass. You just going to touch them, no, we won't smoke now. Just going to touch them. We don't have to roll them off completely. We just tickle them, really. Just a bit of a tickle like that. They don't like to be touched, so they move. They move out of the way and they jump off. And we're not rolling bees over. We're not hurting them so much. I mean, I hope we're not hurting them at all. And there's no bees on this cone. Bring the pot out to the open here. Lift the lid out. So what I tend to do is cut from the bottom upwards. And if you cut from the top downwards, so. The top falls forward and, and, mm. and sometimes you miss the pot. So I do an incision in there first, mm -hmm. halfway through. Now I'm going to come up from the bottom slowly. But I always leave about a centimetre of comb left on the top bar. And I'll show you why. So about a centimetre gap there between the top bar and my knife. Okay, so we'll do the next one, ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Okay, so then we put the lid straight back on, prevent bees getting, getting into there. Here you can see I've left a bit of honeycomb on there. The reason I do that is it, it's a nice straight comb. It'll give the bees a, another straight edge to follow when I put this back in the hive. We'll take the next one out and do the same thing. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to bring this one back. This one wasn't quite right. Put it back there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to checkerboard these two. So I'm going to place, there's a full comb, another full comb, an empty top bar. Right? I've got to put the shim in place. So an empty top bar. Yep, so full, empty. Full. And then we're going to put another empty one in there, or another cut one. So we're going to clean that off. I'm just straightening that out so it's not protruding. So full, empty, full, empty. It's called checkerboarding. And then I'll replace these two back where they belong. And then we can put follower board back in. So if I was to put another bar here, uh, in, and that honeycomb gets attached to the wall, for instance, of the hive, or, or the back wall, or the end board, mm. or the side walls, or the front and back walls, I can't get it out. So by leaving the follower board in here, when I take the follower board out, it gives me room to move these out of their positions to harvest them out. Mm. Really important never to fill your honey to the end with top bars. So um, I just want to know, I want to make a note here, and a, a really good note for people who doubt the Kenyan hive and, and insist that they're troublesome hives and uh, Langstroths are better. If, you were open, if I was opening a Langstroth hive right now, harvesting honey out of that, there would be thousands and thousands of bees all over us, all around us. The, the air would be clouded in bees and um, they'd be stinging our suits, they'd be all over us really. You could see in that footage that there was minimal amount of bees because we're working away from the brood area, we're working in the honey areas, there's not that many bees in the honey areas. We're literally dealing with those bees there, 
We're not dealing with the entire colony because in a Langstroth hive, we rip the roof off and every bee in that colony knows we're there. They know the hive's been breached. Uh, the big bad humans come along and, and they want to have a go at you. So when we're, deal when we're working with a Kenyan hive, we're literally dealing with the ends of the hive away from the brood area and we're only dealing with those few bees that are in this area. It's, it's quite a, a different way of working. Any experienced beekeeper, Langstroth beekeeper, can s instantly see the difference and benefits mm. of using a Kenyan top bar hive for non-commercial reasons. For backyarders, where they belong, they're a fantastic backyard hive and I'd love to see some commercial guys and women using these in their apiaries. In America they do, why can't we do it here? So, we're going to open this end of the hive, this is the left side of the hive. We've just harvested two combs out of the right side of the hive. We've determined that there's five full honeycombs over there. Uh, I like to leave about eight honeycombs over winter, six to eight, depending on how big the colony is and whereabouts it is. We're down on the coast here in southern New South Wales where the winters are very mild and the bees are flying all year round and there is winter forage here. So we don't really need to leave a lot of honey in these hives down on the coast. Actually, we probably only need to leave five combs just to make sure. And sometimes we even harvest in winter. So um, let's, uh, let's open this side and see, see how the girls take to us. Oh, so much propolis, that is completely glued on. I think. Struggling to move that. Oh. Oh, really sticky propolis, this stuff. There it is. All right, so there's the uh, follower board. All right, lots of propolis all over it, which is great. So initially, I can see that this comb here is not ripe. All those cells are uncapped. So we're going to move this one across. This one was fairly... Oh, oh that propolis is really intense. So again, you can. I'm going to show you unripe honey there's a little bit of nectar in there most of it's empty it's fairly light still so we're going to put that aside move it down to the end here and have a look at this one i can see that one's not ready to take yet either lots of uncapped cells there but one thing i want to point out as well it's nice and straight see no attachment there was no attachment to the wall tiny little bit there probably a centimeter Beautiful straight comb. So I've got other videos on how to prevent cross combing and um, management techniques to get them to build straight combs. Check out it on, on, on YouTube. Here's a, another comb I can see. A bit of a bit of a shake. Again, really light. Um, still not a lot of honey in there. There's a lot of nectar in those cells. Not not ripe though. Same as this side. So we'll move that across. That's three. But that's three full combs of honey. So we've got five, six, seven, eight. There's our eight already. So really, from now on, anything else is harvestable honey in my eyes. This one looks like it's full. I can see it's full and thick. Just going to wobble that out. Oh, yeah, it's got a lot of weight in it. I'd say that's about two, two and a half kilos of honey right there. Look how thick that comb is nice and thick probably about 45 millimeters thick the bars are 35 and sticking about about out about five mil on each side really heavy that's harvestable let's let's harvest it now Let's have a look at the next one. I could harvest that, but not that side. So we're going to leave that in the hive. Put it back over here. This one looks the same. It's nice and thick. Probably another week or two away from 
probably another week away from harvesting. Half capped, half not capped, not harvestable. Same there, I'm guessing same here and same here. So I'm gonna stop, there's no point to keep going. But what I do know is this, was, this is all honey. In a, in a few days or in a week, that from there to there is gonna be all honey. One, two, three, four, five, six full combs. Three over there, it's nine full combs of honey. I could come back next week and harvest two or three out of this, not a problem. So we're gonna scrape, scrape this, this attached wax off. Really handy bit of equipment, this one. So what we'll do, we're gonna put this one back in, remember? But what we're gonna do, we're gonna put it towards the end here. So let's put it all back together. Take two at a time now. I don't need to do one at a time. I can do two at a time. Just gonna vibrate slightly. And move these bees out of the way. Oh, no. There you go. No squash bees. A lot of people are in a hurry to close their hive up. Just take your time, let them get out of the way. And then they won't get angry with you as much. I'm not saying they're not going to sting, but what I am saying is you get less issues, less attacking, less stress on the colony and on yourself. So detaching all that, fur comb, we're going to close this one up as well. And now we've got one comb here, one full comb, straight. Another one here, this is our last one. We're gonna replace this cut comb, cut top bar, in the middle of those two. And the reason I'm doing that is because when they draw this out with fresh comb on it, they're gonna draw it along the top bar between the two fully drawn combs. So they'll build straight along there. And then we're going to close this up here. So what we have is an empty comb here, an empty, sorry, an empty top bar here, two full ones. And I'm going to put another empty one on the end here, give them a bit of space. And then I'm going to add the follower board. Leave the propolis in place. The propolis is really important. A lot of people scrape it all off. I leave it on because as we place this back in place, it glues it all back together and seals it again. They'll just manipulate and chew it and, and really seal all the gaps. No point taking it away. They've got to then collect it, bring it back into the hive, reattach it all. Now, you can't just drop that in place because there'll be bees on the floor there. There'll be bees on the wall. So again, a little bit of a vibration. Give them time to move out of the way. We're going to leave a bit of a gap here because there might be bees in this gap. They can't get into the hive, so we'll give them time to come out. Once they come out, a few hours later, we can come back, put these shims in place to cover this hole. The reason I put shims in place or other top bars on the outside of the follower boards is to stop the follower boards moving. I know it sounds weird, but from time to time, I would come back to my hives and there'll be a gap between the follower board and the last top bar. What caused that gap, I don't know. I'm guessing some rats get in there because I often find rat poo on the top of the top bars and they pry it apart. I'm guessing they might pry it apart and, and get into the hive that way. So what I tend to do is use the weight of the empty top bars on this side. In this situation, we can't fit an empty top bar. So we'll use a shim we'll use a thinner shim to jam in there and stop that top bar moving. So there you have it folks, um, pretty good. <laughs> we got what, four combs out did we do, Mark? Four combs, yeah. The four combs of honey, that's about eight, eight to ten kilos of honey out in about half an hour. <laughs> so um, we've determined that there's probably another ten top bars in there full of honey uh, in about a week or two. So we could easily come and harvest another four, four or five bars out of that. And then we've got the rest of the summer to probably get more out of it. This is the first season in this hive. I put it in in September, early September. It's now mid-January. You do the maths. 
not a lot of time. And that was a swarm and it's gone bang and we're harvesting honey out of it in the first season. Kenyan top bar hives, folks, it's the way to go, I'm telling you. <laughs>